You know, the one thing that you can't do, you can't drop your love for art. There are a lot of artists around the world right now that would just love to become a part of your life and style. Highendpottery.com. That's H-I-N-Pottery.com. They're sponsoring this show. They sponsor my entire podcast. They're taking the time to recognize the art that we do every day, and it's time that we recognize their art. Elevate your experience with art. All high-end products are one-of-a-kind functional art pieces. I have been inside their studios. I've watched their art come to life. To find out more, visit HighInPottery.com, H-I-InPottery.com, and tell them that, that Arrow sent you, and the reason why is because they're, they're going to take care of the shipping and handling, HighInPottery.com. Hey, it's Arrow, and this is Play It Forward, a look at the unexpected changes endured by the entertainers, writers, camera people, and all others affected, but not infected, by the global invasion of the coronavirus. These are real people real stories the struggle to play it forward episode number 120 nick walinda the face of the great walindas has just released his brand new book called facing fear step out in faith and rise above what's holding you back with his daring televised tightrope walks over Times Square, Niagara Falls, the Grand Canyon, and most recently, an active volcano, Nick is known for pushing that envelope and identifying new iconic locations around the globe to conquer. He takes stepping out in faith to a whole new level and shares the lessons that he's learned along the way. Facing Fear is a practical guide to overcoming fears that unpack the life of the seventh generation member of the Great Walindas, who had never experienced fear until a tragic accident back in 2017. That's when an eight-person pyramid he and several members of the Walinda family were practicing. It collapsed, and five of its members fell 30 feet to the ground. Now, miraculously, they all survived, but the accident changed Nick Walinda's life forever. For the very first time, he had felt fear, and he had to learn to get past it to get back up on that wire. We are unplugged and totally uncut with Nick Walinda. I'm great. How are you? Fantastic. You have answered the call of Christ. With churches being closed right now and people kind of looking in different directions for brotherhood and stuff, Facing Fear is a book that God is moving through you to reach people, sir. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. God's timing is perfect. When I started writing this book, there was no such thing as COVID-19, at least that we were aware of anyway. Did you get a feeling in any way that it's like, because I mean, it's, you know, God always prepares each and every one of us for something that's always in front of us. But in, in hindsight, was there anything that God put inside your heart? Oh, man, there was so much that God put inside of my heart. You know, this book was written uh, not because I wanted to write a book. It was because God, I believe that I went through this situation. I believe every negative situation we go through, we can use to bring positive uh, to others. We can decide, and we can decide, well, we're going through that situation, which is what helps us get through that situation. That's sort of the light at the end of the tunnel. And I knew when I was going through this and facing this fear that became debilitating, where I didn't think I'd walk the wire anymore, I knew that there was a purpose for it. And that's when I started writing things down, even way back then. So, again, writing this book, really not to people that are facing fear, of course, to walk a wire, but really to to the everyday person. I think so many people, I think God has this calling and this passion and desire that he places in people's hearts. And so often we give up on those passions and desires because of that verse in Proverbs where where it says, lean not on your own understandings. And we always want to understand uh, rather than going, you know what, God, you are in control in the end. You are the, the way maker and I can lean on you. And that's really why I wrote this book was to help others that are facing fear. It might be fear of, of, of training to, to run that marathon because they might not be able to achieve that dream or, or fear of even, even pursuing their, their dream job. I think, uh, or or the calling that God has placed in their lives. So many people become complacent, settle for status quo because of that four-letter word, fear. You you do talk about facing the fears with confidence, and sometimes I wonder as we walk about and we and we intermingle every now and then with with others during social distancing times that that people think they're confident, but I almost feel like that they're blind confident, and they need to get inside this book to understand what true Godfidence is all about these days. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I think it's it's important that we know uh, that we are walking in confidence, but in alignment with God and His Word. And I think it's so often, again, the world gets a hold of us, and we just sort of go down these rabbit trails. And rather than really, uh, really aligning with God's Word and making sure that everything we're doing does align with God's Word, and that, again, I believe God brings that confidence. And that confidence often comes through through mistakes and failures. In fact, this accident is about an, uh, this book is about an accident that we had that nearly yep. nearly took my sister's life. And, and again, by the grace of God, I caught the wire. But 
certainly took my, my mental life uh, and my confidence away for quite some time, dealt with shame. And before I could even deal with fear, I had to deal with the shame. So, uh, again, that's why I wrote this book, was to help those people that are dealing with similar, uh, probably not exact situations, not likely, but, but similar situations just in the walk of life. I believe everybody is on the wire. Everybody's trying to get to the other side, and God is that solid rock. He's the light at the end of that wire, and that's, that's what I always try to focus on. Well, it definitely had to take inner strength for you to put down on paper to reach readers when you said that you have got to be able to call your fear by name because how many people's lives are going to change when they read that yeah you you really do i mean you have to you have to be bold and 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 look my faith plays a key role in my boldness for sure and again i make sure that everything aligns with god's word but i can tell you if it wasn't for my boldness in christ and and my confidence and faith in the Word of God, I would have never been able to overcome this challenge. And I don't know, to, to be honest with you and blunt, I don't know how anybody who doesn't believe in Christ are able to get through situations like this, because I, I would have given up, and, and I was ready to give up, give up, even though I had the book, the guidebook to life, uh, and just sort of had to reevaluate and realize, you know what, I need to dig deeper into this, and, uh, and I can make it through to the other side. And in doing so, I can help others so they don't have to maybe go quite as far down that trail. Don't you think that we're living in times where, where we are Peter and Jesus is saying, walk, you need to walk to me, but, but everybody's going, no, 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 and we're falling in the water. And, and your book teaches us, walk to Jesus. Just get there, man. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And it's not always easy. I don't, I don't make, make it out like it's easy. It's a struggle. And we will continue to sink. But guess what? Jesus will be right there to reach down and grab our hands and pull us out every single time. I think, I think so many people think that uh, success, which can be different to other people, but failure is the opposite of success. The reality is we have to fail in order to be successful. And uh, part of that failing is starting to sink. And then Jesus grabbing our hands and pulling us back out and saying, no, no, my son, let me pull you back up. There's so much power. We as believers don't realize how much power there is in just knowing that, that God is our Father. That became a revelation to me at, at, a, at a fairly young age. I was, I was actually a teenager, and, and my mom had written a book called The Last of the Walendas, and my great-grandfather had written his book, Fear of, uh, uh, he wrote, One Day You Eat the Chicken, The Next Day You Eat the Feathers in the Circus World. So I grew up with a fear of, of finances, of being able to support my family. And I remember uh, my parents struggling financially and going through bankruptcy twice and nearly losing our house and, and, and lost our vehicles and, 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 th- and thinking, you know, Lord, I don't, I don't get what's going on here. And I was really struggling through my teenage years. And, and I remember literally saying to God, why couldn't I just have rich parents? And God literally said to me, Nick, I am your father. That's all he said. And that revelation changed the direction of my life. And if we could all accept the fact that God is our father, the creator of the universe, the access to everything, he made us in his image. If we could just accept that, we'd be able to get so much further in life. He is the great I am, and he is working through you on this book. And I love your chapter, Fear of Feathers, because it puts us face to face with the fear of the unknown and can't control, which absolutely opens up our heart to get some control yeah that's that's right and that's 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 what it's all about is is uh you know submitting to god i mean that's one thing i had to learn is to submit to god submit all of my fears all of my failures uh and admit i had to i had to learn what fear was again i had to admit that i was fearful because pride stepped in which turned into shame the fact that here's nick walenda that many people think is fearless and the reality is I'm human, just like the rest of us, and the greatest challenge of my career was not changing two laws in two countries to walk across Niagara Falls that were 100 years old. It wasn't walking over the Grand Canyon or an active volcano. It was, it was literally facing and dealing with this fear that, that overtook my mind. How do we find focus for a future? Because God teaches us that we're supposed to live in the presence of now, and so to find focus on a future that is so unpredictable, where did you find the confidence for that? Yeah, I mean, look, the Bible says don't worry about tomorrow. Today has enough troubles of its own, and I've tried, to, I've tried to always rest in that. But I also believe that God places desires in our hearts, and often because of fear, we talk ourselves out of fulfilling those desires that God has placed in our hearts because of the fear, again, the fear of failure, the fear of, the, the, uh, the fear of stepping out in faith. Look, I've been bold throughout my career and my Christianity and my faith. I'm on national TV quite often, and, and there's no, no question that Nick Walenda, uh, you know, respects. And, and serves uh, Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, and, and never hidden from that. And, and I think so many people are scared of that alone. Uh, but, but that, in the end, is truly our calling. That is truly the desire that we should all have in our hearts, is to lead others to Christ, because that is an eternal gift that we could never, ever replace. 
Well, this this book is a is a giant step in that direction, sir. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future, Nick. Awesome. Thank you so much, Errol. I appreciate you having me on. You bet. You'd be brilliant today, okay, sir? Thank you, sir. God bless. That's Play It Forward. Hey, you can hear other conversations just like this on all three of my podcasts. Like It's Live, Unplugged and Totally Uncut, and View from the Writing Instrument, all found on every digital platform.